Come here. I would like to take this book home. Thank you very much. I thought it was like jumping the broom. You know, you just announced intent and then you were done, man. It was like the, the deed was done. She said, no, no, there's procedure, procedure. But why do you give me the book? I handed her the book. She looked at it. Oh, boy, just like that. Her face, which was not particularly pleasant to begin with, turned into a kabuki death mask. She looked so distressed. I said, what's the matter with your face? Oh, dear God, how old are you? So I told her, I'm almost eight years old. That makes you seven. Love your 398.2, none of that almost anything. Precision, precision. She told me, you're not ready for this book. And she put the book on the shelf behind her. Thank you. Thank you. Solidarity, I'm with you people. Yes. That's what I felt in my little black stone of a heart. And make no mistake, it was a little black stone of a heart. I mean, I jumped off the house when I was like seven with an umbrella. You know, I, I hung Barbie heads from the Christmas tree one year and terrified my mother. I mean, it was, it was a black little heart, but, but that heart had just discovered something remarkable. A story that I could read all by myself. I didn't have to wait for somebody to give me. And it was an amazing story. And if that, that little heart had had a thread, a filament ever so fine, tied to that book, it could not have felt a stronger tug. And I begged her. No, please, please, I need that book, Miss. My name is Miss Mary McDonald. You may call me Miss Mary Mac, and you may not have that book. <laughs> no, Miss Mary, Miss Mary, I need that book. You're not ready for this book. And then we were, Turk meets Turk. I'm feeling really ready for that book. <laughs> her eyebrows came together and made a little V. She chewed her lower lip for a moment, and she said, with a shuddering breath, give me one good reason why I should let you have this book despite my better judgment and years of, of, of knowing what's appropriate for each child developmentally. I don't know what that means. Give me one reason. I gave her one. I only had one. That book was looking for me. <laughs> and her head went down. <laughs> you were very funny. No, I mean, it was looking for me. And I told her, it jumped off the shelf. I mean, it was jumping. I was flying, man, off the shelf. You should have seen it. All of a sudden, her shoulders started jiggling up and down. Are you laughing? She said, oh, no, I have a little tip. Jumped off the sh- They do get ego. <laughs> and then, I see now, of course, trapped in her own web. She had no choice. She brought the book back, and something that looked frightening like a smile. She said, all right, let's check it out. I had checked it out. It's great. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, we have scanners and barcodes now. Beep, beep, beep. So efficient. But so unromantic. Remember when the book had a little paper pocket? Mm-hmm. And that little paper pocket had a card. And that card had a list of readers. I never met Overton Crooms, but I know for a fact he was a reading buddy. He it was an unofficial reader's recommendation whenever I saw his name in a book. She showed me how to sign my name. She stamped it. She stamped the book, and then she told me I had to have it back on August 9th. When I went outside, my sister held my shirt all the way home so I could read my book. Yeah. Lest you get all fuzzy, I believe she saw that fire hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> when I got home, it was nonstop. My mother, I can't believe you're reading a book. Ma, a lot of kids read books, okay? This is a different book. I read everywhere. I tried reading. I found out that when you learn to read, and now we have to quickly move towards the end. You know, um, probably experienced this. I'm suspecting that this is a room of readers, kind of, maybe, sort of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is it not true the moment that you find your book? I don't mean the first book. I mean a book that you've been really, you know, just, you're just dying to read. Everyone in your life needs you desperately. Yeah. Yeah? Hello? Thank you? My girl. I mean, they find you. There is no closet dark enough to hide in. Well, you have to have strategies. You can read underneath, of course, a flat surface. Works when you're a kid at the table. Works when you're at, like, meetings. But you have to. <laughs> ah, cat's out of the bag now. <laughs> you have to pretend you're there, though. You occasionally have to look up and. <laughs> I learned that I could read up in my favorite tree if I had a peanut butter and banana sandwich and a Tupperware container filled with tang. I could hold out for a couple hours, two, three hours. I could read in the car as long as I didn't look out. And my book that year, that particular book, fit perfectly into the Baptist hymnal of 1968. <laughs> Yes. And um, when I finished the book, I finished it on my front step, a sagging wooden step of a shotgun house. 
picking at the peeling paint, I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed, drenching not only my shirt, but the last page of the book. I jumped to my feet and I did something I'd never done before and I never dared do again. I ran from my house to town center, three blocks. In some weird respects, it was a gentler time. You could do that. When I reached the library, she was closing it up. It was three o'clock. And I saw Oliver for the first time, horn to hoof. <laughs> Miss Mary Mack, you got legs. <laughs> of course I have legs, good Lord. You're moist. <laughs> that brought me back to the moment I held up the book. <gasps> I finished it. And she said, oh dear, I know, oh God. <laughs> Why did you give me this horrible book? <laughs> and in all fairness, right, she said, what do you mean? You begged for that book. I told you you were not ready, but she's dead. I know, baby, I know. I always thought E.B.Y. was a sadist. <laughs> Charlotte is dead. I should have been Templeton. That's right, he was a rat. I know. <laughs> it's that moment that readers' minds have when they meet over a story. And then she took the book and she said, you loved this book. I did not. Yes, you did. I did not. I didn't tell her I did, but I did tell her something else. Something I could not have imagined saying just a few weeks before. My heart was beating so hard, I felt I could hear it drum in my ears when I said, Miss Mary Mack, give me another one. <laughs> the addiction to books, book crack, <laughs> is one I hope I never recover from, and once we find it, we don't. That woman walked me back into the library and she became the purveyor of many titles over the next two, three years. That afternoon, she said to me, as the story ends, I have a better book for you than Charlotte's Web. There's no better book than Charlotte's Web. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. She leaned low and said, that's because you haven't read Anne of Green Gables. <laughs> Who of what? <laughs> it's about a smart mouthed little girl and a cranky old woman and I said, that's like Careful, careful. <gasps> Love in the library, quiet and cool. Love in the library, there are no rules. Surrounded by stories, surreal and sublime. Oh God, I fell in love in the library. Once upon a time.